and welcome to Constangi TV's Close Up on Workplace Law, where we zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their lawyers, and to their human resources professionals. I'm Lee Tyson, and I'm a partner in Constangi's Atlanta office. So, tis the season to be jolly, but tis also the season to get sued if you're an employer who hasn't paid attention to the potential risks and liabilities that can come from your workplace holiday party. So here to talk to us today about some of the darker sides of having fun is Gary Wheeler. And Gary is a partner in our Jacksonville, Florida office. Uh, Gary represents employers in all sorts of workplace disputes, and he also provides training to employers about workplace issues. We're excited to have him. So welcome, Gary. Thank you, Lee. All right, well, just to start us off, can you just sort of give us an overview of what kind of legal issues uh, can arise at all in connection with a holiday party? Sure. There are four primary risk areas. The one that probably scares employers the most is risk associated with drunk driving and other alcohol-related incidents. Another liability is under the Fair Labor Standards Act for time spent at holiday parties sponsored by employers. In other words, do employees have to be paid their regular wages for that time, or don't they? And with consumption of alcohol and looser inhibitions, there's always the possibility of harassment. Finally, one concern that many employers have is how to have a workplace holiday party that includes employees of all religious faiths or of no faith. How can an employer be responsible for an accident that's caused by a drunk driver after their party, if a, a drunk driving employee? Can an employer be responsible for that sort of thing? Sure. First, an employer can be liable for its own negligence if it continues to serve alcohol to employees after they appear to be intoxicated and the employer doesn't insist that they either spend the night at the hotel or take a cab home. But employer can also be what we'd call vicariously liable if attendance at the party is within the course and scope of that employee's employment and the employee has an accident the employer would possibly be liable simply because it is the employer of that employee. In other words, the employer could be liable for these circumstances even if it didn't do anything wrong. That gives us a nice segue into the Fair Labor Standards Act. So does an employer have to pay employees for attending the holiday party? It could be, say if attendance was mandatory or if the employee was performing some type of work at the party. For example, either serving punch, setting up, or, or cleaning up. And workplace harassment, you know, you said that's primarily because of loosened inhibitions because of drinking? Yes, a lot of harassment claims and complaints arise from conduct that occurred at workplace parties where alcohol was served. And of course, that's not just holiday parties. It includes sales meetings, conferences, and just about any other event where employees gather and alcohol is served. Moving on to religion, what's the inclusiveness issue there? Does that mean no Santa Claus? No, I think Santa's fine, and uh, so are trees, bells, and greenery. Okay. What about elves? Yeah, yeah I think they're good, too. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Okay, so what do you recommend that employers do if they want a holiday party, but they want a low li risk of liability there? Should they just ban alcohol altogether? Well, first, since alcohol causes a lot of the problems, I would recommend limiting it. Banning it completely might be too harsh, but employers can use drink tickets, offer a cash bar. It's also a good idea for employers to decide whether they want to make attendance at the party mandatory or optional. As we've already discussed, making it optional would protect the employer from some types of legal liability, and it would also help employees who don't want to attend for religious reasons or maybe alcoholics and are uncomfortable in an environment where alcohol is consumed. Those would uh, be types of reasonable accommodations, ultimately, correct? Yeah, absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. So what if an employer makes all of its best efforts, does everything right, it thinks, and tries to limit its liability in every possible way, but then the day after the holiday party, somebody comes in with a harassment complaint. What should it do? Well, the employer should treat that complaint exactly the same way it would treat any other workplace harassment complaint. Get the details from the complaining party, conduct a thorough investigation, 
come to its best determination as to what happened and then take appropriate action. The fact that the alleged harasser was drunk or at a party just as an, is not an excuse. So with all these concerns, should employers just simply scrap the holiday party completely? Although the parties have some legal risks, employees often look forward to them and they can be great morale boosters. That point shouldn't get lost in our discussion. If employees take necessary precautions, they can continue to offer this benefit to employees with a minimum of legal risk. I know a lot of my clients will be happy to hear you say that. So Gary, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Lee. Okay, and that's it for this edition of Close Up on Workplace Law. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or even ideas for another episode, please feel free to send us an email at constangitv at constangi.com. Thank you again for coming and joining us. I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.